Hey everybody, it's Lewis here. Um, we're going to have a look at uh, HDR and exposure bracketing. And um, this is not my image, but um, it actually works really well. So uh, that's why I chose to use this one. Exposure bracketing in HDR works very much uh, the same uh, with one or two minor um, differences between the two. When you're talking about HDR, you are referring to a high dynamic range. That means, um, you know, uh, we try to get an image where we expose for the highlights, um, where we expose for the midtones, and where we expose for the shadows. So um, when we merge the images um, together, this is what we're going to get. So we're going to get an average um, of all six of those images. Now, normally um, I only use about three or four images. Uh, you need about three to do HDR. And uh, you can merge these in Lightroom. As you can see, um, the reason why we would use something like HDR is just to preserve the details in the extreme highlights, uh, bring out the details in the shadows and also in the meta. So if you have a look at this image, this is a compilation or, or a merged image of all six of those ones. And um, you can immediately notice all the, the detail um, in, the, in the shadow areas, if you compare it to this one. Um, on the highlights, like on the tree, so you can basically see all the details and colors popping out from, um, from the high dynamic range image. When we look at exposure bracketing, it's very much the same. Um, exposure bracketing is when you, uh, oh, I almost forgot to mention this. When you do HDR, you need to do it from, uh, from a tripod because um, some of the exposures are going to take a little bit longer than the other ones. Um, when you talk about uh, exposure bracketing, it means that you are taking a series of images of uh, basically the same thing, but just making sure that you are going to get the correct exposure. So um, if you, let's say you've, uh, you've you hiked up a mountain and you're on top of the mountain and um, you are just want to be sure that your image is going to be well exposed and so on, then um, you would do exposure bracketing. So you will take a series of photographs, one starting, uh, remember when we had a look at the exposure meter, you can just refer back to that session. Um, we had the bar in the middle and we had, um, you know, zero and then plus one and plus two and minus one and minus two. So basically you're going to look at your exposure meter and then you're going to dial it down uh, one stop or two stops, depending on, you know, your shooting style and what you want to achieve. And you're going to take a photo that's that's slightly underexposed, one that's um, that's well exposed, and then one that's a little bit lighter uh, in your exposure. So uh, when you get home, and for some reason you couldn't see what the exposure is going to look like on the back of your camera, it might have been a bright sunny day or whatever, then you can still choose the one that's going to uh, that's the closest to the type of exposure that you wanted, and then pull that into Lightroom and do the final editing. Um, the other thing that I want us to have a quick look at is, um, uh, yeah, so exposure bracketing is, is actually just, um, you know, exposure bracketing allows you to find the best settings that capture the best range of values across your image. So if you look at this, um, I just want us to have a quick look at, um, um, at focus bracketing. So normally we do this when you take photos of an insect or products or a watch or a ring or uh, whatever it might be um, that you would like to use a shallow depth of field but you still want to keep the best focus on the subject. So what we do then is we take a series of photos so we put the focus let's say we're shooting on a, on a wide open aperture we want the background to be blurred then um, we're going to start with something like this so as you can see that little portion over there is in focus so my focus was there the shot was taken. Then on the tripod, I just, uh, just, you know, just move the focus point to the middle of the cup, take another shot, which is this one. And then lastly, it can be a series of five or six or 10 or 100 shots, it doesn't matter. But for this uh, example, I think this is going to be sufficient. And then the last shot was um, taken with, you know, with uh, the rim and the coffee falling into this portion of the cup, which is that one. And if we add those together, we're going to stack these together in Photoshop like I've done, like I've done here, you're going to end up with that. So you end up with an image with a beautiful depth of field, 
which is actually a series of photos that's been taken and they've been stacked together to produce the final image. Um, please have a look at your worksheet. Don't forget uh, to, uh, to do the worksheet and to print it out and to put it in your file. So um, thanks for joining us. And uh, the, I know this is a very short session, but there's a lot to, uh, <laughs> to learn here. So um, in your free time, if you have a little bit of time, um, when you're done with the worksheet, just um, you know, take, uh, take a, an, an object, could be a gold ball or something like that, or a, or a watch perhaps, and just put it down uh, on the table and see if you can kind of get different portions of the image uh, in focus and open up Photoshop and see if you can stack those together and uh, to compile a final image.